Stating the obvious, ChatGPT tends to overuse certain words and phrases. Recently, a tweet published by Paul Graham caught my eye. He shared a graph showing how the usage of the word Dell surged after ChatGPT became a thing. And Delve is not the only word ChatGPT often uses. We can give more examples like tapestry, leverage, testament, and many more. Is this an issue? You know, maybe not. If researchers lean on ChatGPT to refine their writing or help draft an abstract, it's fine. But from a personal point of view, I don't want to encourage people to count solely on ChatGPT when writing stuff. Instead, you will find much more efficiency and quality output if you use it as an assistant or draft creator. ChatGPT is not human. It does some math around and writes mostly sensible things. But you can manipulate it in a certain way to say lies, which we call hallucinations in tech jargon. If this is the case, how we are going to make ChatGPT sound more human though? For starters, you could check out GPT store and use the most popular humanizer tools. But most people use these tools and these tools just repeat themselves. You could try to be smart and use the less popular ones but they are either bad or not working at all. Or you could give ChatGPT a banned words list and it will fail after several inputs. Because LLMs don't really know languages, they use tokens to form sentences. Tokens refer to the pieces of text, typically words or parts of words. And Gen AI models understand and form sentences with these tokens. For example, the word unbelievable can be split into tokens as unbelievable for the model to process and learn from its components. So, the best approach is to take your own notes first. Then, use the correct prompt techniques to get unique drafts and revise them as needed. And if you're looking for a magic prompt that will solve everything, you won't find it here, and I don't think you can find it anywhere. I want you to tell that a Gen AI prompt can be seen as a train made of Lego blocks. And each Lego block has its own purpose. The components I'm talking about are task, context, format, role, tone and style. I explained this philosophy in my previous video, so check it out if you're new to Gen AI tools. Now let's clarify this idea with an example. I told ChatGPT to write me a LinkedIn post about the advent of new roles driven by the emergence of AI. Then it answered like this and it listed some roles like AI ethics officer, AI trainer, teacher, etc. Look how generic the first sentence is. It's boring and it, you can say it's written by AI from a mile away. Instead, if I take notes about what I'm trying to reflect to my readers and craft a prompt for that purpose, look how ChatGPT responds. Let's say I need a LinkedIn post about these new roles and it shouldn't be over 100 words. I want to use an engaging style and a confident tone. I want to start with an idiom, but I'm not a native speaker. Maybe I don't like emojis and I want to list those professions with bullet points. Why not tell this directly to ChatGPT? Look at the output. It has a proper idiom. It has less than 100 words and every other detail is almost close to perfect. And it sounds more human-like for sure. It just takes two minutes to clear your mind and take notes, then you don't need a magical humanizer tool to work with. Remember, you can't really humanize ChatGPT, but you can humanize your prompts. Just don't expect AI to work miracles only. Add some magic spice yourself. See you in the next episode and don't forget to comment and subscribe.